Hello everyone. This is the very brief lecture video for chapter four. And the reason I'm keeping this one really brief is that you have already gotten a chance to engage with a classmate on exploring assertion evidence slide design. And so I've given you a lot of the materials to read. And this chapter is fairly comprehensive. Um, the few things I wanted to point out to you are the table on page 114, which I think is a great side-by-side -side, um, look at common practices and concerns about those common practices. And just direct you as you read this chapter to keep an open mind. Uh, we are used to PowerPoint in a particular way. We're used to big bulleted slides and lots of text. Um, we're used to bullet points. But you might ask yourself why, and I may have sort of hinted at this as we've talked about PowerPoint before in class, but why do we have bulleted slides? Well, it's PowerPoint's default. PowerPoint gives you a bullet. And the question is, are bullets the way we think? Are bullets the most effective way to present? Do we let the designers of PowerPoint decide the way we think and communicate? Um, and I say no, right? So I don't want the people who created PowerPoint, and PowerPoint, I believe, came out in 1985 uh, and then came into really common usage with PowerPoint 1997. Um, but, you know, the people in the 80s and 90s who created PowerPoint decided bullets were going to be the default. Before then, presentations had visual, visual aids, but they were different. They were more difficult to create. Um, you would have a graph or a graphic or something like that that you wanted to show, and you would have to paint, you'd have to print it on a transparency. Some of you may remember these um, from high school or from lectures or something like that. So it'd be like a transparent page with the graph or the graphic printed on it, and then you would put it in a projector, and it would project. So there was a lot more overhead, literally overhead projector, right? Uh, there was a lot more overhead in creating your graphics and your images. What we did a lot of the time was just to print the graphic itself and talk through it, or maybe to have a bit of a headline, which in assertion evidence slide design would be your assertion on the top, but mostly the evidence. Um, with PowerPoint, what happened, I believe, is that people got kind of lazy about it. They started throwing all of the main points of their talk uh, because we were not limited on resources we didn't have to print these out on a clear piece of paper. Um, suddenly it became easy to throw everything on those slides and bullets facilitated that. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons that a lot of people hate PowerPoint. So you can kind of take back PowerPoint and think about maybe the best presentations you've seen and how they engage you. That presentation that we watched in class, uh, the Gorilla Gardener in South Central LA, the way he used his slides, he was presenting and then he would bring in an image or just an assertion. It was very effective. A lot of what he was doing, though, was telling the story. We were paying attention to the presenter and then the visuals when it was time. But the presenter and the visuals were never competing with each other. So if you think of your visuals as a way to supplement, to augment what you're saying, to clarify what you're saying, to add to the presentation. Um, that's the way visuals should be. They shouldn't be competing for the audience's attention, right? You shouldn't have your competitor on screen behind you to where suddenly the audience is trying to figure out, do I pay attention to the slide or do I pay attention to the presenter? And that's why keeping text to a minimum is really helpful. Um, one interesting thing about assertion evidence slide design from my own experience uh, is that in teaching technical writing, I was teaching technical writing in the engineering school when I discovered this assertion evidence slide design. A colleague of mine sent uh, some information over to a number of us, and it was mid-semester. It was actually close to the end of the semester. And I opened the email about 10 minutes before class started, and I looked through everything, and I thought, whatever we were planning on doing in class that day, I scrapped it. We're not doing it. We're doing this instead. And that semester, a few people, I kept it as optional for them to use assertion evidence slide design. 
those were the best presentations that semester. So from then on in technical writing, I've required assertion evidence presentation, um, the setup and the slide design, and they are so much better. The presentations are so much better. Nothing else is different. Um, I, I don't approach the assignment differently. Uh, we don't talk about it differently. It's just this piece that makes a difference. And so I would urge you to really explore this chapter get a feel for it. Really, I mean, there was a lot of visual examples in this chapter. So take a look at them, along with the lecture video on data visualization, um, where I'm interviewing Professor Crone. That should be helpful as you think about more of the gritty details of how and how and why you graph things. Um, but this is more sort of in the context of presentation as you think about how you approach your visual aids. Um, if you have, are feeling any internal resistance about doing PowerPoint differently, I would urge you to let go of that resistance and try and embrace this and see how much better it makes your presentations. Honestly, in the end, if you hate it, you're going to be done with this class. You can go back to bullets. Um, but I certainly never went back to bullet points. They, um, they can stay in the graveyard for, <laughs> for all I care when it comes to presentations. So um, I hope you enjoy chapter four on visual aids. Um, it is, again, something you can keep coming back to. Thanks, and please let me know if you have any questions.